Today I'm going to show you how to load your own Photoshop frequency separation action that will help you with all those settings necessary with doing frequency retouching separation. To begin with, I want to let you know that I've created an action that you're free to use and I'm going to show you how you can install it, but then I'm going to also show you how I made it. Your first step is to download the action from the link that I've provided you. And so it's going to tell you just go ahead and download it. And then I'm going to put it in a place where Photoshop will know where to get these actions. So I'm going to go to Show and Finder. So my desktop's quite messy, but I'm going to go into my Documents folder. I'm going to create a new document uh, folder called Photoshop Actions and I will just drag our frequency separation action right there. So now I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'm going to load that action into my action palette. So I'm going to go into action and I'm going to go to load action and I'll go to my documents folder that I created called Photoshop actions and I will load my frequency retouching action. So now I can actually go to my button mode and I have this frequency separation setup action that I've created. And we'll go ahead and run that now. You'll notice that the frequency separation action actually reminds me that I need to adjust the blur on the low layer uh, relative to the subject I'm photographing. So uh, if it's a close-up, I'm going to need more Gaussian blur. If it's a wide shot, I'll probably need less Gaussian blur. So the action actually is reminding me of that and then opens up the Gaussian blur. I'll come in this area here and I'll just get it to where I can still see uh, I'll still see where the the boundaries are I'm not blurring so far that the colors start bleeding into each other and I'll call that good and I'll go ahead and hit continue and now I have my image ready to go so let's look at what our frequency separation setup has actually done for us I want you to notice that you now have two groups of layers. One is the low, which we call the color grouping, uh, where we can adjust our skin color. And the second group is the high grouping, which is where we adjust the texture of the skin as well. And you'll notice when we open up these groups, we have also had our curves adjustment that just makes that texture layer easier to see for us to do our retouching on this. Now I'm going to actually do some of the retouching right now just to reinforce how to use frequency separation retouching. So to begin with, I'm going to start out with the high layer and I'm going to uh, click on that layer and I'm going to use my clone stamp tool uh, and I'm going to make sure that the clone stamp is set for current and below as opposed to uh, all layers. You could use current layer, but actually current and below I think is, is the best choice for the most accurate there. So I'm going to use current and below with the uh, clone stamp tool. And I'm going to come in here and see that the pores are a little rougher in this area than they are down in here. This is a little softer skin right here. So I'm going to grab this as a source and I'm going to, uh, and I'll go ahead and start out with 100% here and just take a look at what that looks like. And I'm able to just kind of fill in those details in here. I'm going to come over here and just clean up some of this texture right in there. And then now I, you can see I have this kind of uh, outline of a shadow area here. And so I'm going to make a smaller brush, but I'm also going to lower the opacity because just like when I'm doing traditional retouching, I don't want to eliminate those lines that define the form or the tech, you know, the, the depth clues of a person's face. I just want to soften it a little bit. So I'm just going to grab in here and I'll actually just kind of soften this area a little bit more first. And then I'll just kind of go up in here and you see where I just uh, soften that a little bit. I'll undo. You can see before and after. I'll come in here and now I'll go ahead and use my 
uh, spot healing brush for areas like this that I think are pretty easy. And again, with the spot healing brush, make sure you do not have sample all layers selected here. So I'm actually going to just uh, select that and fix that little blemish. I'll come in here and uh, make a small area right in there to soften that up. Okay. And then I can also just look in here and just clean that up a little bit as well. And I can do a before and after. Uh, and I'll look for any big pock marks that maybe I want to take out of his skin. I think that might be unnecessary to remove that, but I can come in here and isolate it. Okay, so that's looking pretty good so far on this. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this, but now let's go ahead and turn off our high texture layer. And now let's go to our paint brush. And you'll notice in the low grouping, we actually have a new layer on top. So we're doing a non-destructive edit as always. And we're just looking at uh, where we can smooth out the tone of the skin. So I'm going to use my brush tool and I'm going to make sure that my flow is set between 4 and 5% and I'm going to be using the option key or the alt key on a PC and I'm just going to select an area where I can just kind of blend in that tone a little bit and in fact I can come in here and just get rid of you know, warm that color up a little bit. Just cover that up and I'm just kind of smoothing that out. You can see that there's these little islands of brighter areas that I'm just going to smooth out. And I might want to change the opacity a little bit just to kind of even make it just a little bit easier to blend in. So I'm just lowering that out. Because uh, really retouching is about camouflage more than anything. And I'm just going to look to see if there's any other areas. Maybe I want to smooth this area out a little bit. Let's just take a look at before and after. There's before, there's after. Okay, and then I'm probably going to want to come in this area here and just kind of lighten that area up a little bit, soften that. So we don't care about the sharpness of this layer because it's only adjusting the color of the image, not the texture of it. That's in our high group. So I'll come in here and just kind of clean up this area right in here a little bit. Now I'm just always sampling around this area. Okay, let's take a look at before and after. All right, let's take a look at before and after. There's before and there's after. And I think this has gotten a little too dark in here, so I'm going to take a brighter color sample. And remember, I've got, yeah, that's looking a lot better. Just blending it in. Okay, so now let's take a look at a before and after of our original image with all our effects in process. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off this curves adjustment layer and I'm going to click on my high texture group and right now I'm going to change that to a linear light for that whole group. So it's going to change the blend mode, the whole group, and now I can turn that 
on and off and see how we're bringing back the texture. And then the other thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to group these two groups together. Actually, I just turn off these groups here. I'm going to group these two groups together and build a before and after. There's before and there's after. See how nice that smoothed out? Let's back it up so we can see it from a distance before and after. We just kind of cleaned up this area in here a little bit. I could probably do a little more work to smooth it out that cheekbone just a little bit there. Uh, and then I actually might actually um, use the dodge tool to blend in here as well. But anyway, the other nice thing is the fact that now we have a grouping here that we can turn on and off. Now I'm going to go back and actually undo uh, the grouped layers here. We're back to our high and low. And I'm actually going to add to my script, or I'm actually going to create a new script that I'm going to add to this frequency separation area because there's a lot of things to remember there. Because remember, when we're retouching, we have our, um, we start out with the image looking like this. And in order to see what it looks like after we've done our retouching, there's a lot of steps I have to go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the button mode. And here is my frequency separation grouping, right? Here is the grouping. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to create a new action. And I'm going to call this uh, retouch retouch preview. I'm going to hit record and I'm going to uh, turn off, my first thing is I'm going to turn off my curves adjustment layer. I'm going to click on the group and turn that to a linear light. And now I've got this so that I can preview it and I will hit the uh, stop button. I'm going to make sure I set this to a red color so that I can see it easily. Okay, and now I'm going to uh, create a new action. I'm going to call this uh, freak, return to frequency retouch. I'm going to hit record and I'll just reverse my steps. So I'm going to come up here to the high group and I'm going to turn this back to pass through and I'm going to turn this back on and I'll hit the stop button. I'm double clicking next to the name of that script and I'm going to change that also to red as well. So now let's go back to our uh, button mode and let's go ahead and return this. I, I kind of like to have my buttons just in one column there and I'll move that over here. So I'll hit the preview, and there's my preview, and there's my return. Preview, return, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is go back to my action palette. I'm actually going to add a, a step in here that's gonna make it really easy uh, to be able to uh, toggle on and off a before and after. So I'm gonna go back to uh, turn this menu uh, up and I'm just going to go back to my original and you'll see the original frequency setup. The, uh, I'll just highlight some details here. The first thing I did is I set to make sure that our image was in 16-bit mode uh, to begin with because when you're working in frequency separation the settings are different when you're applying the image. They're different for 16-bit versus 8-bit. So regardless, I want to go to 16-bit because that's the mode that we should be working with most of the time anyway. And then it's creating all the duplicate layers. It's setting the layer uh, names. 
uh, etc. So I'm going to go all the way uh, down to the very end of this script and I'm going to hit the record button and I'm just going to take these two groups right here and I'm going to group those and rename that as uh, frequency retouch uh, toggle and then I'm going to open that up. I'm going to open up all my layers and now I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, stop and now that I have that on there I'm actually uh, going to be able to go back to my button mode and let's do this preview again and now watch this I now have this toggle grouping of all my layers that I can go before after before and after and see how that just soften that area right there uh, we can zoom in a little bit this is a very shallow depth of field image so it's a really soft image to begin with you'll notice that the hair is sharp on the shoulder but the eyes aren't as sharp as I'd like them to be but this just happened to be the image I was working on uh, this morning so I'm just going to toggle before and after and I can see that I want to go ahead and lighten this area right in here and in that case I might actually use the dodge tool and just really refine that down a little bit because anywhere I think I have a little bit of bruising in here I might just open that up a little bit and if it's not doing anything it means I don't have anything painted there so I'll go back to my brush tool make sure my flow is set to 5% I'll start out at 100% here and I'll just go ahead and do a little more painting grab a little brighter there we go, that's looking a lot better. Sounds like my email is blowing up as I'm working this morning. All right, so now let's go back to our preview. And we can toggle before and after and see the work that we've done. So looking at the before and after, I just wasn't quite satisfied with it. I want to share with you that I always try to, you know, take it to where I break it and then back off. So I want to show you the idea of here's 100% on that color retouching. And I'm just going to back that off. And there's about 73%. And now when I look at my before and after, you can see there's all the, uh, the rough skin and there's the smoothing out that we did. And now I'll back this up so we can take a look at the whole image. And there's the before and there's the after. Before and after. Okay. The next step then is to, I'm going to actually go out of button mode and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to collapse the menu on all my uh, scripts here so that I can get to here's my post-production scripts, here's my default actions here's this frequency retouching uh, group that I've just made here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this group right here and I'm going to go up under actions and I'm going to save actions and now I have the ability to save this group of actions and share this with you. So I'm going to actually create a new folder in here so I keep track. And here is the frequency, recep uh, frequency separation uh, retouch actions final set. And I will save that. So there's the the retouch actions right there. I'm going to uh, put these online for you. So now I'm going to put this online for you, but first of all, I'm going to delete this previous one. I'm going to remove that one. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and upload this final set of actions. and get a shareable link and this will be the link that you use to download this updated version of our frequency retouch action set. So now I have a bonus feature in that I'm going to show you how I built this entire frequency separation action from scratch so that you can see a couple little tips on how to build more complex Photoshop actions. I'm going to create a new action set and I'm just going to call this uh, action demo here so that I don't really need this action. I'm just doing this so you can see how, how I did this. So within this action set, I'm going to create a new action and I'm just going to call this the frequency retouch action, uh, setup demo. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to give it a unique color. I'm going to uh, color this orange. That's how I can create the button color. I'm going to hit the record button. And I'm just going to walk through the steps. So we have a background layer that I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to name this low. And then for some people, uh, the low layer doesn't mean anything. So this is going to be skin color uh, as that uh, layer. I'm going to duplicate that layer again, and I will call this the high skin texture layer. So I have my two layers. Uh, now I'm going to click on the uh, turn off the high layer, go to the low layer, and here's where it gets a little tricky in that I didn't want, there's no one Gaussian blur filter setting that works uh, for every image. So I wanted to be able to give you a message to remind you of adjusting relative to the particular image you're working on. In order to create a step that reminds us of the various Gaussian blur settings we'll need depending upon the composition we're working with, I'm going to go up to the action menu and say insert stop and I'm going to put in a message that says for the next step you will need to adjust the uh, Gaussian blur setting relative to your image. We want to have the image blurred just enough to smooth the colors, but not, uh, but still retain our distinct boundaries of image detail, whatever you want to say to yourself, and then allow a continue button to keep the script going. So I've got that in there. Now the next thing is we need to actually apply a Gaussian blur and that's going to be a little bit of a challenge uh, because we need to be able to pause the script to make that adjustment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and say insert menu item and it's going to give me a warning saying that there's none selected and so I will go ahead and go up to filter blur Gaussian blur and it's going to say the menu item is now blur Gaussian blur. I'll say, okay, great. I've got that in there. So now I actually need to, to blur this layer for a moment and I'm going to go ahead and, and hit the Gaussian blur uh, filter and we'll delete this step a little bit later, but I'm going to go ahead and just click on this here and you can see that's too blurry. We don't have our distinct areas and I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit. That's pretty good about there. Hit OK. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to go ahead and now I will apply that layer to it. But I'm going to remember that I need to actually delete this actual Gaussian blur because we have the menu item right there. So I'm going to go ahead and go to image and uh, apply image to the high texture. I'm going to choose the low 
layer and I'm going to invert it. I'm going to go to add and the scale should be to offset zero. Okay. And now I'm going to create a layer, new adjustment layer. I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, curves. And I'm going to just bring in so that we can see our, our textures. And now we have everything basically set up. I'm going to go ahead and click these two layers and group them. And I'm going to call this the high skin texture layer. I'm going to go down to the low layer and I'm going to add a new layer because that will be the uh, uh, low skin color paint layer. And I'm going to go ahead and group those as well and call this my low skin color group here. And then remember how I decided I wanted to be able to toggle all of them on and off for a preview. So I'll go ahead and hit shift click to group the two groups of layers. And I'll double click to rename this and call this the frequency uh, retouch toggle button. Okay, now what I'm going to do is one more thing, uh, which is that I forgot to make sure that this is for a 16-bit uh, layer. I'm going to expand all our groups here real quick just to let it go ahead and do that for me as well. And I'm even going to click and select the high layer and I'm going to select my stamp tool as well so that I'm ready to start on my uh, high layer retouching. Okay. Now I'm going to do one thing and that is this. I'm going to go to image mode 16-bit mode and make sure that I have that step in there. And I'm going to hit the pause button and that's you notice we needed uh, since I was working with an older web-based image, it was an sRGB 8-bit mode. I need to make sure I have that 16-bit mode uh, image in here. So I'm actually going to take that step, and I'm going to put that at the very top of this script. There's that convert mode, and there's my script at the very uh, top of it right there. And then remember how we had the menu item for the Gaussian blur. And I'm actually going to, there's the menu item from Gaussian blur. But here's where I actually applied one. I'm going to delete that step from my script. And now we should have everything the way we want it. So to test this out, I'm going to delete all these layers that we created and get back to the background image. And we're going to test our script. So I'll go into my button mode. And here is my orange button that we just created. And I'll hit it. And it says that I need to adjust the Gaussian blur. I'll say OK. I'll click on the eyeballs to kind of look and adjust that. And I'll just play with it a little bit. I'll say OK. And now it has done everything that I want. It's got me ready for doing my adjustments onto uh, the skin and I can go ahead and start immediately zoom in on here and I can see an area right on this arm that I want to uh, do some retouching on. So I'm going to go ahead and hold my source Now you have the information you need to build your own frequency retouching action in Photoshop. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.